Kia ora, here are questions 5 and 6 from yesterday's paper for people redoing AS. This is from October, November 21. So in this first question here we've got a cosine graph and we have to figure out the transformations from the basic graph. So if you're in my class this year and you've done level 3 trig, this is a very, very easy question. If you're in AS this year, not, not quite as easy. What we've got to look for is what's the vertical shift, what's the um, amplitude, so the vertical stretch, it's this one here, so this is the vertical shift, and then what's happened to the horizontal stretch. So I'm going to start, as usual, by looking for the midline in here. So the average of 8 and negative 2 is at 3. Now you don't need to do all this, I'm, I'm partly doing this for people in AS this year. right? So the average of 8 and negative 2 is going to give me that halfway mark. And in here that works out as 3, so C is equal to 3. Now looking at this distance here between 3 and 8, we've got 8 minus 3, sorry I'll just switch pen, 8 minus 3 is equal to 5, so the amplitude is going to be 5. Lastly, look at the period of the function. One full cycle is taking only pi instead of 2 pi to come around. So the period normally is 2 pi, but our one is pi, so 2 pi over pi is 2, and that's how I can work out this coefficient here. So b will equal 2. And that gives me that gives me the three values, but y is equal to, what have we got? 5 cos of 2x plus 3. Now this next question looks really, really hard, and the examiner's report comments that very few people manage to get it right. And I think that's because you, you actually have to think a, a wee bit about what they're after here. And what you're being asked to do, if you've got that first equation right, it's actually very, very easy if you think back to year 9 when you learned how to, how to draw the equation of a straight line. So we're told that for these values of a, b, and c, so for this function here, use the given diagram to determine the number of solutions in this interval for each of the following equations. So we have to solve the trig function being equal to this. Now this looks really horrible when you first see it, but then you realise that if the equation is this, this is just the equation of a straight line with a y-intercept of 0. In other words, it's going through the origin. So we know that in this case, this point is on the straight line, and now we're going to find another point on that straight line, straight line and we're going to join the dots up. So when x is equal to pi, we get y is equal to 6 over pi times pi, which is just 6. So the point pi and 6 is on the curve. So let's whack on a dot. This was actually, I didn't do this in the work solutions. I told everyone to come watch the video. Join up those two dots with your ruler. See, this is why you take a ruler into your exam. And look at that. How many intersections are there? That's how many solutions there are. One, oh no, not one, sorry. One, two, three. We really need a different color pen for the intersections. Let's do that. So one, two, three. So there are three solutions. Next one. The next one is here, and again it's a straight line, so I've got y is equal to 6 minus 6 over pi x. So when x is equal to 0, we've got y is equal to 6, so 0, 6 is on the curve. When x is equal to pi, I've got y is equal to 6 minus, sorry, big noise in the background here, 6 minus 6 over pi times pi, which is equal to 0, so the point pi, 0 is in, on there. So it's basically the other way around from before. So I can draw that straight line on now. I might use a different colour. Let's use a blue pen. There we go. Okay, so here's this one. Oh, something's happened. Right, 6, and it goes through 0. And so now we can just see how many solutions. You weren't asked to find the solutions, guys. You just asked how many. So look, there's the first one. Boom, here. And then there's the next one there. All right, so there are two intersection points there. You can see that you've got to draw it accurately, and it won't intersect with this one. There's nothing there. So here we've got two solutions. So you should be able to see that if it's only one mark each, it can't be anything involving that much maths, right? But you just have to put your brain into gear and look at what's being asked. Um, the chances that you get that question again this year are really, really low, but I think it's a really nice problem. I really like it. So let's look now at the next one, which is kind of a classic AS geometry thing. Let me just get rid of all of this mess. Uh, as soon as you see that, you're guessing that you're probably going to have to find the area in the perimeter, and, and that's in fact what you have to do here. So we've got a metal plate, and the metal plate is ABC. The sides are this straight line, AB, and then the sides are two arcs. Now, the, the side 
AB is obviously six centimeters. The arc AC though is part of a circle with center of B and radius of six centimeters. So we can start to draw some things in if like me you have a bit of trouble visualizing it. So the center is at B and AC is on a circle with the center at B. So that is very useful because it means that, did that draw? It means that, um, what have we got? Uh, we've got a radius of six and the same thing over here. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Something weird just happened with the ruler thing on here. So I'm just going to draw in what we've got. We've got an equilateral triangle, right? Because we've got the arc AC is part of a circle with center of B. And then we've got the arc of BC. So this bit around here is part of a circle with center at A and a radius of six, right? So we know that A, we know that B is on the circle. So we know that the radius here is six, but we also know that C is on that circle. So there's C being on that circle. Let's just have a look there. Okay, so that is very useful because we've got a 666 triangle, which means that this angle in here is pi on 3. So we have to find the perimeter of the plate, and that just got very easy. So formulae that we're going to need here, are S is equal to R theta, and so the perimeter is going to be this side. So AB plus arc BC plus arc AC, and I'm writing that curly. So AB is 6, and then I've got R theta, so 6 times pi on 3, and then I've got 6 times pi on 3 again, which gives me 6 plus 4 pi. So that's nice, that's for the perimeter. Now let's look at the area of the plate. I'm just going to get rid of some of the mess on here. Hopefully you can see that I'm going to find, I, there's lots of different ways to do this, but the way I did it is I went, well, I can easily find the area of that sector, and then I can easily find the area of this sector, but then I've double counted the triangle. So we're going to find the area of the two sectors, and we're going to take out the overlap. And for this, I need the area of a sector formula, which is a half r squared theta. And easy now because I've got pi on 3 for my angle when r is equal to 6. So the area will be uh, a half times 6 squared times pi on 3, um, that's for sector ABC, and then for sector BAC it's going to be the same, so I've got two of those, minus the area of a triangle, and the area of a triangle is half AB sine C, and the A and the B in here are, so this is my sine C, and these are my two sides. It doesn't matter which angle we use, right? So it's going to be minus a half times 6 times 6 times sine of pi on 3. So we just need to clean that up a bit, the, the half and the 2 go, and we get left with, what have I got here, 12 pi, 36 over 3, 12 pi minus 18 times the root 3 on 2. For this, if you're watching from AS, you really have to know those special triangles, okay? So that gives me a final answer of 12 pi minus 9, 12 pi minus 9 root 3. So that's my final answer here. And we're done. So I'll do um, the earlier questions either later on tonight or tomorrow sometime. Thanks for watching.